Welcome to the 14th episode of Season 11 of Eagle News for Monday, September 11, 2017. Eighth graders, stay tuned because after, after Eagle News, Mr. Meadow will give some announcements about D.C. Today is the 16th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on the Twin Towers in New York and Washington, D.C. My name is Finn. And my name is Lauren. Let's start today, today's news with some facts about 9-11 tragedies. Headlines. Some 9-11 facts today to remember. On September 11, 2001, 19 militants associated with the Islamic extremist group Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes and carried out suicide attacks against targets in the United States. Two of the planes were flown into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. A third plane hit the Pentagon just outside Washington, D.C., and the fourth plane crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. Almost 3,000 people were killed during the 9-11 terrorist attacks, which triggered a major U.S. In, in, in a in a what? Initiatives, initiatives to combat terrorism and defined the presidency of George W. Bush. Our friends from the History Channel present a timeline of events on September 11, 2001, 16 years ago. Let's take a look. September 11th, 2001, a day of grief, a day of courage. This is how that day unfolded. My daughter called me. She said, a uh, plane just flew into the World Trade Center. I said, nah, you gotta be kidding me. It's gotta be a pipe of cover. Some clown was flying down the river. At 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston, with 92 aboard, traveling at a speed of 470 miles per hour, strikes the North Tower of the World Trade Center complex. Within minutes, officials coordinate the citywide emergency response. Their base of operations is a state-of-the-art command center located on the 23rd floor of 7 World Trade Center. With one tower in flames, the tragedy is only beginning. It is 9.03 when United Airlines Flight 175, with 65 aboard, traveling at the speed of 590 miles per hour, smashes into the south tower of the World Trade Center. This aircraft strikes the corner of the south tower. It rips a diagonally shaped gash from the 84th to the 78th floors. The south tower lasts only 56 minutes before it succumbs at 9.59 a.m. The dust cloud billows outward for blocks. Victims stagger away. At 1028, the television mast atop the North Tower spears straight down. Once the collapse started, there really wasn't any way to stop it. just going to go all the way down once it got started. Chaos in New York City. Power is down in Lower Manhattan. Phone lines jammed with more than 230 million calls. Hundreds of firefighters trapped in the towers. Hundreds more raced to the sea. Falling debris from the collapse of the North and South Towers ignites fires in the neighboring buildings of the World Trade Center. World Trade 4, 5, and six are ablaze. World Trade 7, the building housing the city's command center, burns unchecked for seven hours. At 5.20, it collapses. The city's emergency nerve center is destroyed. Somewhere in that time, and it's very hard to keep track of time during this, 
they had been ordered to evacuate number seven by the Port Authority. To this day, we don't know who gave that order, but whoever it was saved a lot of people's lives. With New York a war zone, some residents walk across the Brooklyn Bridge to get out of the city. Others seek escape in vessels piloted by the Army Corps of Engineers. At 7.45 p.m., the New York Police Department says 78 officers are missing and estimates that 200 firefighters are dead. At 10.56 p.m., police officials say they believe there are victims alive in the rubble of the World Trade Center. Working with urban search and rescue teams, there was a lot of areas to be searched underneath the debris field. There were voids that had to be searched for possible live people. September 11th, 2001, the longest and most tragic day in New York's history is drawing to a close. I'll uh, take a moment for lunch. Today's lunch is popcorn chicken, hamburger, hamburger, cheeseburger, cheese French bread. There's always the deli to get a sandwich. And also, don't forget to grab a fruit, vegetable, and a milk or juice. Remember, there's breakfast in the cafe every morning. Now let's head back to the studio for more facts about 9-11. As millions watched the events unfolding in New York, American Airlines Flight 77 circled over wa downtown Washington, D.C. before crashing into the west side of the Pentagon military headquarters at 9.45 a.m. Jet fuel from the Boeing 757 caused a devastating inferno that led to the structural collapse of a portion of the giant concrete building, which is the headquarters of the U.S. Defense Department. All told, 125 military personnel and civilians were killed in the Pentagon along with the, all 64 people aboard the airliner. Let's go to the lounge for the next, our next video. Finn and Lauren from EU News went around last week and spoke to our teachers about what the 9-11 attacks meant to them. Let's see what our teachers have to say about the significance of the 9-11 attacks. Hey Eagles, welcome to this video where I go around the school to ask teachers what 9-11 means to them. First up, we have Mr. Nicolosi. What does 9-11 mean to you? 9-11 was just such a uh, difficult day in the lives of our country. Um, it, but what it really means now, what is it, uh, 16 years after it happened, what it means, it, it, was a, it was a day that our country, I think, came together. Um, sometimes these tragedies bring people closer together and people just sat by their TVs and watched and cried and um, the outpouring of patriotism after, um, I think you lose sight of that after it goes on a, a while and years pass, you kind of, kind of forget that. But back then, you know, we, we all kind of pulled together and um, family meant a lot more and uh, friends meant a lot more. And you know, you would watch the TV and just see this heartbreaking thing. And um, it was it was a time that I will never forget. And, uh, you know, 16 years later, it's hard to um, tell people what it was like that weren't alive. You guys weren't alive. So it's really hard to tell you about it. But it was just a time of great tragedy. But if anything came out of it that was positive, it was that people just kind of pulled together and got a lot closer. Second up, we have Mr. Imbrogno. What does 9-11 mean to you? I think 9-11 is a good time for us to remember that as a country, we can all come together as one and support each other. Unfortunately, sometimes chaotic events uh, have to make us realize that, but it's also a reminder that we can do it on an everyday basis and not just on days that we remember tragedies. Third, we have Ms. Policino. What does 9-11 mean to you? 9-11 is um, a sad day. It's a day of remembrance. It's a day that um, life as we know it in America changed. Um, it makes me sad because so many people died. It makes me sad because people um, 
targeted our country and a lot of innocent people lost their lives. Um, but it also makes me sad that um, the kids of today, like you guys, don't um, get to have the freedom of travel without restrictions that we used to have. Um, and that always makes me sad. And fourth, we have Mr. Gillum. What does 9-11 mean to you? Um, I'll never forget it. It was my first year teaching. I was at Baker Middle School in uh, Marion City, only about an hour away. Um, and we had a lockdown drill. Um, it was my first lock, well, it wasn't a drill. Um, it was the first lockdown that I had to experience as a, as a teacher. So as you can imagine, um, I was scared as well. Um, it was a horrific day in history um, that will always be remembered. We'll always remember um, the people that, that um, died that day. And, um, you know, I always think about their families on 9-11 and, and um, think about where I was there and how fortunate we are to, to be alive today. And, um, but 9-11 is a powerful day, and, and I wish all those families the best. Let's just give a moment of silence for the many people that died on Hey Eagles, thanks so much for watching this video. Now let's head back to the newsroom. Go. A fourth California bound plane, United Flight 93, was hijacked about 40 minutes after leaving Newark Liberty International Airport in New Jersey. Because the plane had been delayed in taking off, Passengers on board learn of the events in New York and Washington via cell phone and air phone calls to the ground. Knowing that the aircraft was not returning to an airport as the hijackers claimed, a group of passengers in, and the flight attendants planned an insurrection. The passengers fought the four hijackers and are suspected to have attacked the cockpit with a fire extinguisher. The plane then flipped over and sped toward the ground at upwards over 500 miles per hour, crashing a royal field near Shanksville in western Pennsylvania at 10.10 10 a.m. All 44 people aboard were killed. It's attended, intended, intended, to, tar target. intended target, to target is, is not known, but theories include the White House, the U.S. Capitol, the Camp David Presidential Retreat in Maryland, or one of several nuclear power plants along the eastern seaboard. The former site of the Twin Towers is The former site of the Twin Towers in New York City is a beautiful memorial that is a great story to tell. Let's check out this memorial that millions have already visited. My birthday was September 9th, so I had just turned 9. My dad was one of the 23 police officers. Same as Ramon Suarez. I miss him a lot. I really do. Seeing his name in the memorial, it means everything. On September 11, 2001, the World Trade Center was attacked. It became known as Ground Zero. After years of hard work and rebuilding, the entire site has been transformed into one of beauty and of remembrance. At its heart is the National 9-11 Memorial, Millions of visitors from all around the world come to this site to pay their respects each year. What they see are two enormous reflecting pools that sit in the very footprints of where the Twin Towers stood. The pools are surrounded by bronze panels inscribed with the names of the nearly 3,000 people who died in the attacks of 2001 and a World Trade Center bombing in 1993. When you come to the memorial, you come up to the edge of each one of these voids, and you see this enormous empty space in front of you. It's a space that can't be filled and will not be filled. It is there where you encounter the names of the dead. First, the impression you have as a, a visitor is how many names there are. It's a sea of names over an ocean of tears. The memorial plaza 
made up of hundreds of swamp white oak trees, surrounds the memorial pools. One tree is different. It is a calorie pear tree, now known as the survivor tree. This tree was at the site on September 11, 2001, discovered in a pile of rubble by some recovery workers. It was nursed back to health and returned here. And in some sense, it really embodies the whole experience of 9-11 in a living being. It is damaged, but it also shows a tremendous amount of new growth. And now there are no words to describe how bad it was. The massive debris field, the smell of death completely took over your whole being. To work out of that to where we are now, it was a slow, hard process. As bad as 9-11 was, it demonstrated that when the times require, we do have the capacity to come together and take care of each other with limitless compassion. I remember that day. I remember where I was and what I was doing. My generation, we remember growing up with it. It's like you were part of history. Makes me very proud to know that my dad went out the way for strangers. That's what I call a hero. Nobody ever wants to forget those people that passed away that day. Those people were brothers, wives, mothers, sisters, friends, and those people should be remembered in every way possible. Every single person that comes here is making a contribution. You truly are our future. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I am Ella. Thank you for watching this special edition of Eagle News, looking back at the significance of the 9-11 attacks in 2001. Now, take your books out and read.